Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this image. With lathe light photography, the quality and position of the lighting is as important as ever. The techniques used in this image can be applied to many different subjects. And in this video, I'll show you exactly how I did it. OK, so first of all, the camera that I'm using is a full frame digital SLR. And on the front of that, I have a 24 to 70 zoom lens. On the top of the camera, I have this flash sync trigger, which is also capable of controlling the energy in the studio heads. The camera itself is tethered into Capture One software, so it's easy to see the results as we go along. OK, so here, on this low uh, table here, I have set up uh, the subject. Uh, just some nuts and some nutcrackers and so on. Uh, and I've got this uh, rattan tray as a textured background. Uh, so what I want to do is have the lighting so that it will actually bring out the texture a bit uh, in, this, uh, in this subject. All right, so the first thing that uh, you need to be able to do is position the camera directly over the top of the subject. Now, with most tripods, uh, what you can do is try and get it in something like the right position, like this. Now, if I just look through the viewfinder here, and we uh, zoom that in a little, like so, just focus that up, uh, you can see that it's actually quite hard to get the camera in the right position over the top of the subject. So, what we can do on some tripods is spread the legs out asymmetrically. So, what I can do here then uh, is if I just undo this clamp, I can pull the two front legs out, like so. Like that. But I'm leaving this back leg uh, as it was. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that is to make the whole thing lean over forwards. So now I'm much more um, over the top of the subject. So if I just reposition the tripod, like that, something like that anyway, uh, and now replace the camera on the top. So, I can back this up a little, so that I'm more vertical, something like that. We'll just check that in the viewfinder. Uh, I need to focus that up a little, because I've changed the distance somewhat. There we go. Something like that. OK. Uh, and now I can be much more direct over the top of the subject. And just to make the whole thing a little bit more stable, I'm just going to put a sandbag on the end of this leg. There we are, like that. So this is now quite rigid. OK, so with all that done, next thing to do would be just to turn the camera on. And you can see the software has recognised the camera. So we can see that uh, the settings that I have on the camera at the moment are it's in full manual mode, a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second, 100 ISO, and I've chosen an aperture of f8. That should give me a reasonable depth of field. OK, so the next thing to do, uh, as I usually do, would be to just grab uh, a blank frame like so, just to check that we're not getting too much contamination uh, from the house lights. You can see we've got some uh, slight highlights uh, just running along the edge of this uh, nutcracker here, uh, but nothing else uh, really to speak of. So that should be fine. Right, so with that done, next thing to do would be to think about the light. Now for that, I'm going to use this Profoto D2 
with this uh, two foot by one foot softbox on the front of it. Now this might seem a bit of an odd thing to do, to light this sort of subject with something like this. But let me just show you why I'm going to do it. I'll just place this in here. First of all, I'm going to put this in this orientation. This is giving me a wide light in this direction and a very narrow light in this direction. Now the placement of this is going to be quite critical. It will change the way the image looks uh, quite considerably. So for instance, if I get this very close in, it will change the way the fall off of the light works. Uh, and it will also make the light very, very soft. So this is very close in uh, to the subject about there. So next thing to do would be just to turn this on. And just with an arbitrary energy level set, we'll grab an image and just see what we get. And we can use the software to grab the image like this. OK, and you can see from this, we're perhaps uh, maybe a little bright. Uh, if I just turn the exposure warning on, uh, yes, you can see that I've got uh, some warning just along the top here. Uh, so that's exceeding the uh, white point. So what I might do is just take maybe half a stop off the energy uh, on this light. Uh, and it's convenient enough just to do it on the back of the light itself, like so. We'll just grab that again. There we are, that's a bit better. OK, and you can see in this image that um, we have quite a lot of fall-off across the image. This part up here is very well exposed. If anything, this bit down here is maybe a bit under. Uh, but there are very few shadows. The whole thing is very soft. So we're not really bringing out very much texture, uh, although there's quite a lot there to start with. So what I need to do is reposition the light to give me a bit more texture. So first of all, what I'm going to do is just bring this back to about here. I'll just put that up a little so that it's at the same sort of angle. There we go. Something like that should do, I think. OK, and now I'll just grab another image. Right, now in this image you can see that due to the inverse square law, we've lost quite a lot of the exposure here. So what I need to do is compensate for that movement compensate for this distance. Um, so what I'm going to do is add maybe two stops to that light. OK, so now with that done, I'll grab, it, grab that image again. There we are, that's brought it back. Uh, so if I now just flip between the two, that's what we had before. So it's all very soft, quite a lot of graduation across it. And this is what we've got now. So instantly, it's very much more even, uh, but we also have a, a relatively hard shadow in various places. But that shadow isn't consistent. There's more shadow in one direction than another, and that is due to the shape of this softbox. Because it's long and thin, it's acting like a very soft light source in this direction, and a very narrow light source in this direction. So you can see in the image here that there's very little shadow on the end of this nut, but there's quite a deep shadow behind it. And that is down to the shape of this light. Now, in this position, uh, we're getting a reasonable result Let's just see what happens if we move it even further back. I'll just move it here. And just to maintain the angle, I'll just pop that in the air a little like that. Now to compensate for that extra distance, I'm going to add 
another stop uh, of energy. So just selecting that light, just grab that and add one stop. OK, so now we'll grab that again. Now in this capture you can see the effect that that has had. Uh, the shadow here is much, much harder than it was before. I just go back to where we were. That is what we had before. Uh, so that's quite a nice compromise, uh, and I think that's uh, quite uh, hard enough, really. Uh, whereas this one has become perhaps a bit too hard for this subject. So it just goes to show that you don't need to actually move the light very far to make quite a large difference uh, in the outcome of your image. Right, so I think I'm going to take this one uh, further forward. So I'll go now into Photoshop and just do the bare minimum of post-production. OK, so here we are in Photoshop. And I've loaded up the file of the image that we shot earlier. Right, so the first thing that I would do uh, is just make a copy of this file so I don't alter the camera original. Uh, so the way that I prefer to do that is just to go onto the layer here uh, and just right click that and ask for a duplicate layer. Uh, but I don't want uh, this to be saved to the same document. I want a new document. So we'll click that and I'll just give that a name. Flat lay notes. There we go. We'll just click on OK. Right, so what the software has done is made me a new file and that's at the top here. So this is what I'm going to be editing and I can dispense with the camera original. It just gives you that bit of uh, redundancy. If you just want to go back to the original that you captured in the camera, you can. Right, so with that done, uh, we'll just have a general look around the image and really there's very, very little to do to this. I think just uh, crop it. Uh, and that should be good to go. OK, so we'll just select the Crop tool. Now, my image is destined for video, so I'm just going to pick a particular ratio, and I'm just going to pick a ratio of 16 by 9. So with that set, uh, I'll just adjust the handles here ever so slightly, just to bring that in, and maybe just bring that along to here somewhere like so. Yeah, there we go. That will do. And there we have it. So in this flat layer image, the quality of the lighting has had a direct impact on the final image. So you have soft shadows with controlled highlights, and that is all down to the position and shape of the light source that you used to create the image. OK, so I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made that image. And if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear. And don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and click the like button. Thank you very much for watching.